housing inventory is declining, the number of homes having a price decrease every week is declining, both Dallas and Collin County saw a jump in the number of pending sales this week. Is all of this just due to seasonality, or are we finally starting to see the impacts of mortgage rates being lower than they've been any time in the last year? Mortgage rates spent the entire week below 6.5% last week, and even got as low as 6.37%. We did see a small increase in the number of people applying for mortgages last week, but remember, for me, real home buyer demand is not going to enter the market until mortgage rates get below 6% for a sustained period of time. So we're not there yet. Also, a big benefit of these recent rate drops is I'm seeing home builders offering as low as 3.99% fixed FHA rates. We'll be covering all of this and much more in this week's market update. My name is Michael. I'm a real estate agent here in the Dallas area, and every Monday I give you a weekly update covering all of Dallas and Collin counties as well as the national market. We're looking for trends. We're tracking mortgage purchases as well as mortgage purchase applications as it's our best leading indicator to what demand will look like 30 to 90 days from now. We'll be looking at things like median list price, days on market, how many homes are having price decreases, what's inventory looking like, and if you stick around until the end, it's my favorite part, the top 10 ranked hottest and coolest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin counties. If this sounds like something you're into, make sure and hit the subscribe button. And if you're looking to buy or sell in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. I've helped every one of these yellow dots find their little piece of Texas, and I'd love to help you too. Just call, text, or shoot me an email. All that info is in the description below. Okay, today is September 3rd. Let's see what the data is telling us. And if this is an old video, you can click the playlist here and it'll take you to the latest weekly market update. First up is market news. And it was a pretty slow news week in real estate, but I did come across one interesting article I wanted to share. This is a report that came from two Swiss Real Estate Institute senior economists. They estimate that mortgage rates dropping to record lows in 2020 and 21 amounted to a savings of $600 billion for homeowners and accounted for about 2% of personal consumption spending since 2022. So it's not even counting the savings of 2020 and 21. 600 billion dollars of extra spending money for homeowners since 2022. And I'm quoting now, a dollar not spent on mortgage payments is a dollar free to spend elsewhere. This helps explain why recent policy tightening did not initially appear to slow the economy. And I would have to agree, I was feeling very confused seeing mortgage rates going through the roof and the economy did not seem to be slowing at all. But it makes a lot more sense now knowing that homeowners who got to refinance down had an extra $600 billion to spend just since 2022 all because they were able to refinance to a lower rate. And as of June 2024, when this data was analyzed, mortgage rates were still up near 7% around then, but the average existing mortgage was around 4%. 95% of US home loans are either 15 or 30 year fixed, and more than half of those are still paying less than a 4% mortgage rate. So I wanted to quickly show you just how much money those rates actually saved people. So I bought a few houses in the years leading up to 2020, and if I remember correctly, the rates were somewhere around a 4.75%. So assuming a 4.75% conventional rate, putting 5% down, here is what the savings would look like on a 500K house. On a 500K house that got to refinance down to a 2.75% rate, which was the rate I got when I bought in 2021. So just going from 4.75 to 2.75, a 2% drop. And this is important to remember moving forward because for any of you who bought a home at around a 7.5 rate, you're already below a 6.5 and well on your way to being able to refinance to a 5.5. So it's the same. 2% drop. But here's the numbers. At a 4.75%, your principal and interest payment would have been $2,478 a month. But because you only put 5% down initially, you'd also have a mortgage insurance payment of about $205 with decent credit. But after you refinanced to 2.75% in the years that followed, your principal and interest payments went all the way down to $1,939. Plus, homes were appreciating like crazy. So you'd have gotten to 20% equity pretty quickly and been able to get rid of your mortgage insurance, saving you another $205 a month. This means on that 500k home, you'd now be saving $744 every month. That's almost $9,000 a year in every homeowner's pocket who got to refinance down like this. So that is a lot of free money to be spending. So being able to refinance 2% down is a huge deal. And I think even if you buy now, you're still going to have an opportunity to refinance 2% down in the coming years. And obviously, this only benefits people who owned a home before 2020. And if you didn't, own a home before then, things have obviously gotten more difficult for you. But I can tell you, I met with would-be buyers in 2017, 18, 19, and they were telling me every single year the same thing. Prices are too high, they have to come down, so 
I'll wait until prices come down and I'll buy then. The news told me, my parents told me, somebody that I trust convinced me, so I'm gonna wait for this thing to happen. And of course you know, prices never came down, instead they doubled. But in fact, there has never been a single year that someone doesn't come to me with this exact same thing. I'm gonna wait until prices come down. I'm certain prices are gonna come down, they have to come down because X, Y, Z, and the result has always been the same. They never buy a house because things get more expensive. So those people who could have very easily afforded a house then, that would now be worth double, are sidelined permanently unless their income doubles, which it is not likely. Not many people's income just doubles overnight. And I'm having this same conversation as we speak today. Would-be buyers who can afford a house today are telling me, I'm going to wait for prices to come down. And today the reasoning is, housing is less affordable than ever, so nobody can buy houses, so prices have to come down. Did you know this is exactly what those buyers were telling me before COVID? the exact same reasoning. And it made just as much sense to them when prices were at all-time highs back then as it does to you today. And people will continue saying this until the end of time. And on the other hand, you're gonna have the people who are saying price crash every year. They're gonna continue saying that until the end of time. And the reality is, housing is less affordable than ever and people are still able to and buying houses. So the point is, find whatever house you can afford today, even if it's not your dream home, lock in the price now and refinance down in a year or two and you'll be the one saving that $700 a month, just like the homeowners who refinanced in 2021 did. Please do not try and time the market. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Now let's move on. We're starting with national housing inventory this week we actually saw a small decrease of 409 fewer homes for sale in the country. This is the first decrease we've seen in a long time. And as you can see, we still have 38% more inventory than we did last year. So this gets us to 704,335 homes available for sale in the country. This same week last year, inventory was only at 504,000. So still much better this year. And if you look in 22 and 23, we did have a similar slump, that's these two lines. We had a slump lasting for the next few weeks into mid-September, and then inventory continued up all the way into September, October. So we may see a similar thing like this, and then continuing up. I was hoping that we could get near 800,000 inventory. I don't think that's gonna happen anymore, but either way, we're still significantly better than the last two years. And then for reference, the all-time inventory bottom in 22 was 240,000 homes for sale. At the peak of last year, we had 570,000 homes for sale, and this same week in 2015, we had about 1.204 million homes for sale. So up more than double from the 2022 bottom, but still need to nearly double again to get to a normal market. But we're getting closer every week, except for this week, but it was a very tiny drop. Okay, now we're moving on to new listings. And if you'll remember, when rates had their big drop a month ago, we saw a big spike in people listing. They were thinking, rates dropped, people are going to be buying, I got a list right now. We saw a big spike. And then for the next two weeks, we followed along with 2022's numbers. This week, we fell all the way back down to 2023 as the hype of the lower rates has kind of worn off. So we had a good three-week run of new listings. Now we're right back to 2023. And I don't think we're going to see another big spike until the next rate cut is announced, which is going to be many months from now. So I think it's likely we're going to follow. I mean, 22 and 23 were both very similar anyway here at the end of the year. So I I know we're just going to follow somewhere in here. And don't panic, next week we are going to see a sharp drop. That's because we had a short week this week with the holiday. But this week we had 59,195 new listings in the country. And the last thing I want you to observe on this chart is you can expect less and less new listings every single week for the rest of the year which means even though inventory can continue up into September, October, you're gonna have less and less new options to choose from every single week. So if you're wanting to be picky and passing on great homes right now, hoping something better is gonna come on, the reality is you're gonna have less new options to choose from every week. Now moving on to pending sales. You can see weekly pending contracts has just been slightly above 2023's numbers for most of the year. We are quite a bit from 2023 this week. And overall, we have 2.7% more single family homes under contract than last year, which equates to about 9,700 more homes pending. And that's been very interesting all year because we have had quite a bit less people applying for mortgages all year, yet we've had more pending contracts. Then the last thing we cover nationally in another very interesting chart is the percentage of properties that had a price reduction this week. Every year it's normal for a third of homes to take a price cut before selling and looking at the national chart this week, we're at 39.3% of homes having a price decrease. 
and this is the lowest number we've seen since July. Last year we got as high as 39.2%, the year before we got as high as 43.2%, and as you can see, around this time last year, we did have a dip as well for the next few weeks, similar to the inventory chart we just saw, where inventory could drop into middle of this month before it starts climbing. In 2022, it was basically just flat for the next few weeks, but this is gonna follow whatever that inventory chart does. If inventory is going up, then the number of homes having price decreases are going up. So again, that could go all the way through October, November. But that is a larger than I would have expected dip for this week. Okay, now moving on to mortgage rates. We started the week at a 6.43, got as low as a 6.37, and ended right where we started at a 6.43. So you can see rates clearly are in a downtrend. If I could draw a line on top of all these peaks, you would see that is definitely a downtrend. I don't know that it's gonna continue down. I think it's gonna go sideways for a while until another rate drop is announced. Like I said, that's gonna be a few more months. And then regarding mortgage purchase applications, we actually saw a 1% increase last week. And as I've been saying, there is no reason to believe we're gonna see any significant increase in the number of people applying for mortgages until rates get consistently below 6%, which is why you still see a ton of new construction offering below 6%. I would say almost all new construction at this point is offering below 6%, and I'm seeing as low as 3.99% in some communities on FHA rates. Okay, moving on, before we look at the local market data, two things. Number one, if you wanna make sure you don't go broke buying a house, I've made a course for you, and in this course, you will track your actual spending habits from your actual bank account so you can discover with 100% accuracy how much you actually can spend on a housing payment every month. It takes into account your utilities. It takes into account your income tax bracket. How much should you be setting aside for repairs based on the age of your house? It takes into account literally everything. So it's a no-brainer for anyone who wants to have peace of mind about their home purchase and their budget. And then number two, if you're still a ways out and you just want to master the home buying process so you are fully educated when you step in, I've made two courses. One's for new construction, one is for pre-owned homes. They're very different experiences, different contracts, different deposits, different timelines. So pick the one that most suits you. Links to all of those are down in the description below. Okay, now we're moving on to the local markets, starting with the MLS data in Dallas County. In the last week, we had 471 new listings. That's 29 less than last week. 351 closings. That's 67 more than last week. Of the homes that closed, 56 were immediate sales, meaning they contracted within the first week. That's nine less than last week. 255 went under contract. That's 70 less than last week. In total, there are 2,124 Four homes either under contract or in pending status. That's 102 less than last week. Moving on to Collin County, we saw 361 new listings. That's 87 less than last week. 304 closings. That's 80 more than last week. 50 immediate sales. 12 more than last week. 185 went under contract, that's eight more than last week. In total, there are 1,767 homes under contract or pending, that's 60 less than last week. So a big jump in closings for both Dallas and Collin counties. And you wanna know what's interesting? We are exactly one month from the day rates had their huge drop. Definitely not a coincidence, look at this. So today is September 3rd. If we go all the way back, August 2nd, we are at a 6.4. August 5th, we were at 6.34. So you can see the very beginning of August, last month, we were having this huge drop. And suddenly, one month later, which it usually takes one month to close a house, we have a big spike in closings. Definitely not a coincidence. Okay, moving on to the Market Action Index, and if you're not familiar with this, it takes into account all of this data, puts it into one easy to read graphic with a number. Anything a 30 or below is a buyer's market. Above a 30, we're asking how much of a seller's market are we in? We are currently at a 40, which is a slight seller's advantage. Technically a 39.81, it rounds up. But you can see we've been pretty flat for the last month. Pricing has been flat over the last few weeks. Small increase in the price of median listings, but this is just a range. I would call that flat. Average days on market is climbing to 80, but median is holding firm at 49 since July 12th. Number of homes having price decreases definitely stalled out a while ago, about a month ago. So it looks like pretty much things have just been steady for the last month. Again, inventory very slow climb for the last month. Only about 100, well, 47.70 to 8.61. So yeah, almost 100 more homes now over the last month. I would say that's a very slow change for a market of this size. And of course, market action index has remained pretty flat. So the expectation we have at this point in the year is things should just be cooling off for the rest of the year. They're not quite cooling off yet, but they're definitely not heating up. They, they're really just flat for the last month. Now let's look at Collin County. Collin County pricing has definitely cooled off a little more. Same with median list price. 
Average days on market though is lower, even though it's climbing at a 68. Their median finally got up to the same as Dallas at a 49. Their number of homes having price decreases has been higher. There is a lot of new construction here though as well. It's, it's kind of a, it's a pretty different market to Dallas. So you can't really just compare the two directly. Their inventory as well has been flat for the last month since, yeah, about August 2nd, totally flat. And their market action index is 37.43. That's the lowest it's been. Back here was a 0.45, had a little jump, and then down to 4.3. But I would just call that totally flat. Again, for the last month, it just looks like things have been flat, except their, their prices have been dropping. All right, now we're looking at pending sales, starting with Dallas County. And just look how straight up this black line is going. Let me turn off the other two. That is not normal for this time of the year, for pending sales to be climbing like that. Let's turn on last year. As you can see, we were going straight down now. Now, the big difference here is mortgage rates. The last two years, mortgage rates were climbing all the way through December, and then they crashed down in January. We're seeing the opposite this year, where mortgage rates are actually cooling going into the end of the year, and you can see the result. Again, it's no coincidence, we're having more pending sales later in the year. And then if we look at 22, it was dropping now as well, again, as rates were going up through the end of the year. Then Collin County, of course, their pendings have been way, way, way above all year. As I said, it's a ton of new construction, so it's, a, it's the number two fastest growing county in the country. So it makes sense why they had a big jump this year of the number of pending sales. They're just growing like crazy. But again, this is a week that numbers should be going down. Actually, for the last few weeks, numbers should be going down. But as we see, they're also going up. So what this is showing you is rates definitely do still matter. Even though they're not below 6%, that drop down to around a 6.4 is definitely generating more sales. Okay, now we're moving on to the top 10 ranked charts. The zip codes are not loading this week and they didn't last week either until after I was done my video. We'll try again, but at least we have the hottest and coolest cities. And these again are ranked using that market action index number, a 30 or below, remember is buyer's market. So looking at the absolute hottest cities, number one for a long time, remains Carrollton, Texas at a 52.15, followed by Ferris, 51.18, then Duncanville and Louisville. All four of those remained in the top four this week. Saxe heated up one, Grand Prairie cooled off one, so those two switch places. Lancaster heats up one, Garland cools off one, so those two switch. And then Plano and Richardson remained at number nine and 10 this week, so not a ton of changes. Then moving on, same thing, but looking at the coolest cities, Leonard, Van Alstine, and Sunnyvale all remained in the bottom three. Those are also all buyer's markets. Anna cooled off one, which means Prosper heated up one. Blue Ridge remains. White Wright jumps onto the list at number seven. Rockwall heats up one. Farmersville jumps onto the list at number nine. And Levon heats up two spots to be the hottest city on the coolest cities list. So the big changes were Salina and Melissa, both in Collin County, heated up entirely off the list. That's it for this week. As always, if you're looking to buy or sell in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. All my info is down in the description below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.